Here I'm arriving in a target area that looks red on the alteration image. In the real world the outcrop appears white and bleached. This has to do with light colored alteration minerals such as kaolinite and different clay minerals. They replace the original rock. The red stains in between contain iron oxides. If we look at the outcrop in detail we can still recognize the original volcanic texture preserved in the rocks where large phenocrysts are surrounded by a fine-grained volcanic matrix. In order to identify similarly looking alteration minerals, I take some representative spectral measurements of the area. For that purpose, I will use the ASD's optic fiber. The fiber optic cable in black is mounted in a pistol grip to facilitate the pointing. The data cable exits the ASD housing on the other side and needs to be connected to the laptop. Before measuring the solar energy reflected from the rocks, I need to measure a reference panel. A reference panel is made from materials that reflect almost 100% of all incoming sunlight. Its reflective behavior is well understood and we can use the reference measurement to correct for variations in strength of sunlight and for some atmospheric effects. The best field spectrometry results are achieved under clear blue skies and near solar noontime. At low sun angles or under hazy conditions, the reference panel has to be remeasured much more frequently. Under partly cloudy skies, light conditions change too quickly and often make decent spectroscopy based on reflected sunlight impossible. The bare fiber optic has an opening angle of 25 degrees. From one meter height, it gathers average reflectance spectra from a ground area of 45 centimeters in diameter. By taking several measurements in different places, we can capture variations within the outcrop, which can help with the upscaling to the airborne dataset. Here you see a typical reflectance spectrum of this target outcrop. Three distinct absorption features in the shortwave infrared tell us that the main spectrally active mineral is alunite. The white trough at 0.9 micron is caused by iron oxides. Three regions of the spectrum are extremely noisy due to atmospheric absorption, mainly water vapor. Measuring reflected sunlight in these regions is not possible. We can also measure reflectance spectra of other materials surrounding the outcrop, such as soil, grass, twigs or man-made materials like road surfaces. Having this extra information helps to understand image pixels that are not pure rock outcrops, but mixtures of several materials. We can also measure individual plant species, as each type of vegetation has a slightly different reflectance spectrum. Here you see a typical spectrum of green plant material. Strong absorption of chlorophyll is visible in the wavelengths shorter than 0.7 micron, followed by a strong increase in reflectance values towards the near-infrared, called the red edge. You can see that the shortwave infrared is relatively free of information for plant material. And again, atmospheric features block the three bands in the spectrum we had seen earlier. Another way of measuring rock samples is by using the ASD's contact probe. It contains an internal light source in addition to holding the fiber optic cable in place. 
It is, therefore, independent of illumination by sunlight, and measurements are done by putting the 1 cm measuring window directly in contact with the sampling surface. Since the strength of the light source can vary over time, we also need to measure the reference panel first. After that, we can use the contact probe to select the exact area on the outcrop that we would like to measure. The reflectance spectrum taken with the contact probe contains the same shortwave infrared features of the mineral alunite that we have seen before. The spectrum is very clean and free of atmospheric features and has a higher signal-to-noise ratio as compared to measurements of reflected sunlight. The biggest advantage of the contact probe is its ability to measure a specifically chosen point on a surface. As an example, we can measure the weathering crust as well as a fresh surface of the same hand specimen and compare the results. It is often important to keep and take back some sample material for further petrographic and geochemical analyses such as X-ray diffraction, X-ray fluorescence, or microprobe analyses. In the following part, I would like to do field visits to spectrally distinct areas. I will link the ground-based views and observations to how an object appears on the high map image. For that purpose, you will see the object's position and spectral behavior on this overview map. The top map shows the high map scene in a near-infrared false color composite, where vegetation appears red, water appears dark blue or black, and iron-rich rocks appear in shades of yellowish-green. The bottom map shows the alteration color composite that we discussed earlier. Alunite appears purple, kaolinite red, illite in yellowish-green tones, and unaltered rocks in blue. The area of interest is highlighted with concentric circles and a white arrow. In cases where the object is filmed from a distance, an angle symbol indicates the view direction. The Sinto Caldera mining area was the main mine site for the gold extraction operation. The intensive magenta colors in the alteration color composite indicate the high alteration intensity this area was exposed to. The complex color patterns are due to the mining operations, such as excavating and dumping of material in other places, which overprints naturally occurring mineral patterns to a large degree. Excavation style was a combination of open cast mine with underground adits and shafts following the silica veins with the highest gold concentration. If we look at the outcrop, we can see the hydrothermal breccia. The phenocrysts are completely altered to white powder or show up as small vugs inside the silicified components. Some spaces in between the breccia components are filled with different shades of chalcedony, as seen here at the bottom left. <laughs>